What's up everybody, it's Jimmy. And in today's video, we're gonna be talking about why the Julian Newman and LaMelo Ball comparison should have never happened. So about a year or two ago, people started making comparisons between Julian Newman and LaMelo Ball. And I, I kinda get it. I mean, they were both really small at the time. They were playing with people a lot older than themselves. They were middle schoolers playing with high schoolers, high school varsity kids, so 17, 18 year olds, back when they were like 13, 14. Um, they both were point guards, you know, quick little guys who could play a, way above their age level. But the more you look into their game and their style of play, you begin to see how absurd that comparison really is. So first we look at their stature. So when the comparisons began between the two players, I kind of understood it, they're both pretty small. But if you take a step back and look at their genes, so their family, where their height comes from, you could tell that LaMelo was always gonna be a lot taller. If you look at the clips from last year to this year, the kid's grown like eight inches, it's ridiculous. He even looks like way older and it's only been a year. So LaMelo has two brothers that are both 6'6 and his father's 6'6. And from what I've seen, his mom's pretty tall too. If you look at Julian's family, his dad's 5'6 and his mom is shorter than that. And as a 15 year old, he's still only 5'7". So he has some time to grow, but most of the time, if you look at a person's mom and their dad, it's a pretty good guess of how tall they're gonna be. So he's probably not gonna grow a lot more. I'm not saying small guys can't ball, but it does make it a lot harder. And in fact, there's actually only two players in the NBA currently who are under six feet, and that's Kay Felder and Isaiah Thomas. Lomelo is already 6'2", pushing 6'3", and like I said, Julian's only 5'6". So when it comes to size, it's just not even close. The next thing is competition level. LaMelo plays and has been playing in one of the best leagues in the country in Southern California with his brothers since he was a freshman. And he was a young freshman at that. Whereas Julian, granted he has been playing at a varsity level since he was about 11 years old, it's just not the same type of varsity. As I said in one of my last videos, just because you say varsity doesn't mean it's the same level of play. There's different classifications, different leagues, and Julian plays in a below average league as far as skill level, and his team went zero and nine in district play. So he plays on a bad team in a bad league. So of course he's gonna look a little bit better than the rest of his competition. One of the glaring aspects about the comparison is that Julian's dad coaches him. And if you've ever played on a team where you have a teammate who has a dad as a coach, it doesn't matter how bad that kid is, he's gonna get playing time, and with playing time comes production. And although LaMelo had two brothers to pave the way for him, nothing beats having a dad as a coach as far as getting playing time, which kind of leads into my next point, and that's hype. Chino Hills wasn't really hyped up until last year when Lonzo, who was still a senior at the time, kind of put the team on the map as one of the best seniors in the country, and from there, we got the Ball brothers and kind of where the situation's at right now with Lonzo going to the NBA, LiAngelo playing in college next year, and LaMelo gonna be in high school. However, the case with Julian isn't so similar. Julian's father kind of seems like a guy, and I'm not trying to be judgmental here, it's just from what I've seen in the articles that I've read and kind of just my personal experience with the situation. It kind of seems like Julian's father is living vicariously through his son. And what I mean by that is Julian's father has been criticized for exploiting his kids. In fact, he also has a daughter who's younger than Julian, who has also been in national features. And I guess the difference is, one's receiving attention naturally through word of mouth and ability, and the other is receiving artificial recognition. His father contacts every media outlet he can to put his kid on the map. In fact, Tampa Bay Times calls Julian the most marketed 12 year old basketball player in the world at the time. I think it's kind of funny all the criticism LeVar Ball's been getting lately for praising his sons, yet no one really says anything about Julian Newman's dad going batshit crazy on the sideline when something doesn't go his son's way. And the biggest difference here is that LeVar Ball can say whatever he wants off the court, but he can't really dictate what happens on the court. Now imagine if the Ball brothers had their father as a coach what kind of crazy numbers and stories and statistics you'd be reading about. The Ball brothers had to play under a controlled environment through someone who actually made them work for what they got. Julian Newman plays in an environment where no matter what he does, he's probably gonna get his way no matter what. The most obvious thing for me is the eyeball test. So when you play basketball for years, you have a decent compass on what's good and what isn't good. 
and I'm not saying Julian isn't good, but I just don't think they're even on the same level, especially right now. LaMelo personally passes my eyeball test. He's smooth, he doesn't force a lot of things. His shot is unorthodox, but it's effective. He's meticulous, he has good court vision, and he's always had a, a lanky body. So I guess what I mean by that is you could always tell he was gonna be a little bit bigger, like he had to grow into his body. If you watch the games from this year, he got more shots up because Lonzo was no longer there, so he had more production on offense. But if you go back and look at the clips from last year when he was the third option, and he actually played a true point position or even a shooting guard position, he had amazing vision and he fed his brothers constantly. Whereas with Julian, I don't really see that so much. It seems like things are a little forced and his game is already really polished. If you go back and look at the videos from when he was a little kid, 8, 9, 10, 11, you can see how he was in the gym putting in work, which is awesome until you realize that when you've already put in that much work, you can only get so much better, which a lot of people call your ceiling. And I feel like Julian's already so close to that ceiling because of how much he's trained and how much he's done with his father. There's not much else to learn. He also shoots from his chest and dribbles with his head down. In fact, there's this video where he's playing against Kyrie Walker where he's literally throwing the ball off the kid's head in the middle of a game. And the worst part about all this is that his father is cheering him on. His father wants to see more of this. That's ridiculous. The kid's doing off the heezy NBA street moves in the middle of a basketball game and everybody thinks it's all cool. It's just crazy to me. I understand it's two different styles of play. The comparison kind of made sense to me about a year ago, but I think we've all came to the conclusion that we were a little off with that assessment. And I'm not saying Julian isn't talented. He is really talented. He puts up amazing numbers and I wish the best for him and his family. But this is just my assessment of the comparison. I think LaMelo is one of the best high school players in the country. Um, and I think he has a lot of room to grow, which is one of the most surprising things about his game. He has two more years to play. Julian has three. So we'll just have to see what happens.